Thank you very much. Let me first thank the organizers for the invitation and to make this hybrid conference happening in these difficult times. So I changed my title slightly and it's a bit more general, so I included an, another compound. And so the outline will be as follows. So I will give a short introduction, coupling of in magnetic and structural degrees of freedom. So I'm interested in materials where we have also geometrical frustration and we have a low dimensionality in addition to competing energy scales. And for that, the material class A iron 4 X2, where A is lutetium, yttrium, or zirconium in our case, and X is germanium or silicon. And here I will discuss two examples. The first one is the existence of a putative quantum critical point in zirconium, iron 4, silicon, respectively germanium 2. And then I will come to the original topic which was announced in the abstract tuning competing ground states in lutetium iron 4 germanium 2 using external pressure. So this work was a collaboration with external uh, sites also. So first of all the main work was done by Ajish who was carrying out most of the experiments. The sample work Samples were grown by Katharina Weber in the group of Christoph Geibel. We did Muir's R and Mössbauer experiments at different places. We also did X-ray diffraction at the Brazilian uh, Synchrotron Light Laboratory. This is uh, by Ricardo Dos Reis, who was a former postdoc in my group. But let me now come to the first part. So we are interested in novel ground state properties in correlated systems. And these are usually observed when competing energy scales are existing, as we heard in the case in the talk of Poussin Park, when you suppress an ordered phase, for example, an antiferromagnetic phase to zero temperature, you expect to see uh, novel unconventional behavior in the vicinity of a quantum critical point that can be unconventional superconductivity, but also unconventional metallic phases, which are showing up as non-fermi liquid behavior. And here, as I mentioned before, we are interested in materials which have an additional uh, geometric frustration. So you see here in the case of lutetium iron 4 germanium 2, the iron moments are sitting here on this uh, edge shared tetrahedra and they have a kind of frustrated interaction between each other. And furthermore, we have here, they are arranged in quasi one dimensional changes. And this is expected to enhance quantum fluctuations at low temperature. So one should expect enhanced, uh, uh, enhanced uh, critical behavior in the vicinity of a quantum critical point. So what is important here is that the magnetic transition is in most of these compounds accompanied by a structural transition from a tetragonal to orthorhombic phase. This is quite similar as in the ion tide compounds. And what is what can be easily done is that one sees by chemical substitution a significant change in the nature of the phase transition. So for example, when we have the ytrium iron for germanium 2, we have a first order phase transition at about 50 Kelvin, which is accompanied by a structural transition. When we go to the lutetium iron for germanium 2, which I will present later in detail, here you see data in, from the sustainability. There is a sharp jump at 36 Kelvin which is also a magneto structural transition here. We can go further in decreasing the unit cell volume in the yttrium iron for silicon 2. There's a two-step transition where the first one here is connected to a structural transition and so on. In the lutetium iron 4 silicon 2, we have a second order phase transition 
which is shown here by the smaller feature as an example. And the second compound which I will investigate, will present here is a zirconium iron for silicon 2 that shows a second order phase transition at rather low temperature of 6 Kelvin. So it's likely that one is able to suppress it to a zero temperature and might find a quantum critical point here, especially this transition seems to be not accompanied by a structural transition. So, and here we have several candidate materials for tuning competing ground states. And what I will show you, as I mentioned before, this is the lutetium iron for germanium 2 and the zirconium iron for silicon 2. So, let me first come to the zirconium. In the stoichiometric compound, there are indications for short range magnetic order. So you see here in the susceptibility a uh, quite broad feature. Also in the specific heat, there's only a very broad feature, so no indication for a sharp phase transition. The same is true for the uh, resistivity, where we can identify this minimum here as uh, uh, the phase transition. At low temperature, this material shows thermoliquid behavior. What is surprising for a transitional metal compound is that we have a rather large Sommerfeld coefficient, which is more than 100 millijoule per mole Kelvin square, which is quite unusual and already points at strong correlation effects. And we can assume that these are caused by the strong spin fluctuations caused by the geometric frustration in this system. Also, the Sommerfeld-Wilson ratio is enhanced. In a thermal liquid, you expect a value of uh, 1. Here we find about 9. From preliminary Moosbauer and Moosbauer measurements, we know that this is indeed only short-range magnetic order, so there is no indication that the material uh, orders long-range at low temperatures. But when we, uh, when we substitute silicon by germanium, which corresponds to, uh, which is uh, expanding the crystal lattice and corresponds to negative pressure. We find that the germanium substitution stabilizes the long range antiferromagnetic spin density wave order. So this is seen in the susceptibility. We have here a clear feature. Also the specific heat anomaly sharpens and one sees a typical shape of a mean field like phase transition. And in the resistivity, we see that the resistivity first shows a metallic behavior and then a minimum and then the resistivity is enhanced again. That is typically observed in spin density wave materials. So when the spin density wave gap opens, we have a the larger scattering, which leads to an enhancement of the resistivity. So that is a strong indication for formation of a spin density wave ordering. What is important to, to remark is that in the whole range, the Sommerfeld coefficient stays large, which is confirming the presence of strong electronic correlations. So this data can be summarized in a temperature germanium content phase diagram and we see that with decreasing germanium content Tn is suppressed and decreasing germanium content corresponds here to negative pressure and what we learn from the structural data is that there is a linear relation between germanium concentration and the lattice volume this suggests that there should be a qu quite good one-to-one -one correspondence between a germanium substitution and application of hydrostatic pressure. So we would expect that with hydrostatic pressure, we are able to suppress the magnetic order to zero temperature and to find uh, possibly a quantum critical point. So for that, we did not study the stoichiometric compound since there is the anomaly in the resistivity is rather weak and we have no well-developed long-ranged ordered uh, 
stage. Therefore, we were selecting the sample with the germanium content of 0.1, where we have a well-developed uh, spin density wave at low temperature and can nicely follow the anomaly here to lower temperature with increasing pressure. In below 12 Kelvin, we unfortunately, uh, below 5 Kelvin, we unfortunately lose the signature of this transition since it's getting weaker. And as you see here, we have an increased noise in the data. This can also be summarized in a phase diagram you see here that from about uh, uh, 11 Kelvin, we suppress Tn to lower temperatures with increasing pressure and we can extrapolate the data to a critical pressure of about 2.1 GPA. So this data suggests the presence of a quantum critical point at 2.1 GPA. When we look at the magnetoresistance, we get some further indications on the magnetic fluctuations. At low pressures, we find the typical H square behavior, which is expected for a metal. But with increasing pressure, we find a first negative magnetoresistance, which is then increasing. And a negative magnetoresistance is observed when, for example, spin uh, fluctuations are around, so increasing field suppresses the scattering or the spin fluctuation, so we have less scattering on spin fluctuations, and in that way, this leads to negative magnetoresistance. So this indicates enhanced spin fluctuations in the vicinity of this critical pressure. Furthermore, we have indications of the breakdown of the family liquid description in the vicinity of uh, PC here. What I mentioned before, one would expect a quite good correspondence between application of hydrostatic pressure and chemical pressure. To confirm that, we are plotting the phase diagram as function of the unit cell volume, and we see that indeed we have a quite Nice correspondence here. You see in blue the data from the germanium substitution and the data from the pressure work. And this both suggests the existence of a quantum critical point at a lattice volume of about 182 angstrom cube. So we have identified zirconium iron for silicon 2 as an interesting material for the study of antiferromagnetic quantum critical point in a frustrated and almost one-dimensional system. And this suggests uh, further investigations and also uh, hopefully leads to the efforts to obtain single crystalline material and high quality measurements down to lower temperatures. What it's st still important to point out here is these large electronic specific heat at low temperatures, which really shows you that strong correlations are present in this material, which makes it quite unusual to other compared with other transition metal compounds. So let me now come to the second part, the tuning of competing ground states in lutetium iron for germanium two. So as I mentioned before, in this compound shows antiferromagnetic order below 36 Kelvin. In the specific heat, you see nicely that this transition is of first order. We have this sharp peak, and we also see a hysteresis between measuring on warming and cooling, which identifies this transition as first order. From previous neutron diffraction studies, one knows the magnetic structure, which is shown here. And what is important that this transition is accompanied by a structural transition from tetragonal to orthorhombic. Mm -hmm. And at ambient pressure, there's no indication that the magnetic and the structural transition are separated. So in that way, this looks quite similar to what is observed in the iron mictite superconductors. And that was basically the motivation for us to look closer into this material.
Here you see the susceptibility data, which shows this nice jump at the transition. And there's also a very clear feature in the electrical resistance, which is dropping, dropping quite strongly at 36 Kelvin. And this lets us to build up the pressure temperature phase diagram. You see here the transition. And when we increase pressure, the shifts to lower temperatures gets a little bit broader. But in the derivative, we still see a clear maximum. So defined by the inflection point. You might argue that it's difficult to identify a transition here, but I will give you further evidence that we really have a phase transition which can, which we can follow to lowest temperatures. What is interesting that above 1.7 Kelvin, there is no inflection point anymore visible, and all further data seem to lie on top of each other. So there's no big change anymore at uh, low temperatures. You see here, oops. And what I want to point you at is also that here is a little bit a shoulder visible at high pressures, which might be identified as a second phase transition. And this is what I also want to convince you that there's clear evidence that we have here a second magnetic phase transition. But let me first uh, come to the first version of the phase diagram, we see that the magnetic ordering temperature is here suppressed. Unfortunately, we lose a signature in the temperature dependent data, but we can also plot the isothermal resistance. And you see here that there is a clear jump at about 1.7 Kelvin. So from this low pressure to high pressure, and we can follow this jump also at higher temperatures. And these points help us to follow the nail transition to lowest temperatures, and we can identify a critical pressure of about 1.8 GPA. As I mentioned before, there is here this pronounced shoulder, and this is a bit more better visible when we look at the derivative. So you see at about 40, between 30 and 40 Kelvin, the derivative is strongly enhanced. So basically, there's a sharp drop of the resistance. Here you see the data at 1.67 GPA, where you also can still see the feature which we used for defining TN. So we just put these data here in the phase diagram. Of course, that is a quite weak indication, and we were looking closer at this. One indication that here above 1.8 GPA really something magnetic is going on comes from the magnetoresistance. While we have at, temp at pressures below 1.8 GPA at 2 Kelvin, we have a positive magnetoresistance. Suddenly the magnetoresistance uh, changes to be negative. So as I uh, explained to you before, that is an indication that we have stronger spin fluctuations in this region here. And it gives you some indication that we are dealing with a magnetic phase here. Furthermore, we did magnetic susceptibility measurements under pressure. Again, we can follow this TN transition to lower temperatures. We have here a sharp jump in the data. There is also at higher temperatures, around 40 Kelvin, this as maximum or hump in the data. We can just take these points and also put them in the phase diagram. And this suggests that we have a second magnetic transition, which is basically unchanged in temperature up to 2.5 GPA. There are some additional features at lower temperatures, which I do not want to uh, discuss here in detail. However, these are still quite weak indications, and we did microscopic measurements. So first, we did Mössbauer spectroscopy. This is data taken at the ESF. And this is just showing so we, that this phase is indeed antiferromagnetic. So what you see here is uh, absorption. And this signal can be described assuming that we have uh, 
one third of the spins pointing in one direction and two thirds in the other direction. So this is data in field. So basically field is, is changing the signal in a way that lets us conclude that this here is an antiferromagnetic phase. We also get uh, data at several pressures which indicate that there is some change in the hyperfine field which may be, might be explained that the magnetic structure is changing or that the moment at low temperature is changing. But this data gives us the first indication that we have here really antiferromagnetic phase, so we name the lower phase AFM1 and the upper one AFM2. When we look at muon spin resonance, which we took at three characteristic pressures, at zero pressure, when Michael, it was one, yeah. I think uh, we are running out of time. Can you like wrap up in a minute or two? Okay, so we have here uh, three characteristic temperatures and we see that the full magnetic volume fraction is magnetic. So basically below TN1, everything is uh, magnetic, the full volume. And what we also learned from the muon spin precession frequency that this upper trans that this TN1 transition is first order in nature. So we have here this jump in the data while at the upper transition, it's only slowly increasing. So we have here the magnetic transition second order and here first order. And that is also confirmed by specific heat. But what I did not yet discuss is that at ambient pressure, this transition is accompanied by a structural transition. And comparing with ion MIGTIES, one would assume that uh, the structural transition is also suppressed with TN1. And therefore, we did X-ray diffraction under pressure. And here you see data for three different pressures. And here are shown two peaks, one which is not splitting from the tetragonal to the orthorhombic phase, and one which is splitting in the orthorhombic phase. And you see that this split always takes place between 35 and 30 Kelvin. So this shows that the structural transition is not suppressed with pressure. And we can combine that in a phase diagram that the antiferromagnetism is restricted to the orthorhombic phase and we have the paramagnetic tetragonal phase. What is surprising here is that we would assume that the structural transition is first order. And so we have not here a combined magnetostructural transition, but the material is first changing from the tetragonal to the orthorhombic phase and then getting magnetic. And for spin density wave calculation suggests first that magnetism is supported in both phases and we assume that the structural transition releases magnetic frustration and in that way is facilitating the magnetic ordering at low temperature. And that is why we have this coupling from uh, the structural transition to the magnetic ordering. And let me just put up the summary. So I was showing you two examples where frustration and geometrical or geometrical frustration is playing an important role for the pressure temperature phase diagrams. And this suggests two new compounds which are worth to investigate further. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, so, Mihal, did I get it correct that you have the structural phase transition in both compounds or only in the lattice? In the zirconium iron for silicon 2, there is no indication for a structural phase transition. Uh, but then I was wondering why, because if you say that you need the structural phase transition to somehow reduce the frustration, then it should happen all the time, is that? I mean, in the serum iron for silicon 2, there is indication that there is still strong frustration because we have this large uh, Sommerfeld coefficient and it's suggested theoretically that you expect that when you have a large frustration. And I mean, it's a different compound. So here, these uh, band structure calculations are only for the lutetium. And there it looks like the, basically the phase transition, both tetragonal and orthorhombic are 
fine with getting magnetic. And we were then speculating that this somehow has an influence on the frustration, which we did not yet confirm, and which leads to the basically pressure independent TN2, which is quite unusual. So you would expect basically that something happens to TN2. We know that the structural transition is basically unchanged up to 10 GPA, but we don't have uh, magnetic data above 3 GPA. So we don't know what happens with the antiferromagnetism at higher pressures. So question. Yeah. Um, at high pressure, the phase transition between the tetragonal and arthrombic phase, is it still of the first order or second order? Structural transition. So the structural transition, there's really a large jump in the data. So we have no indication that that could be uh, second order. So everything looks like first order. I, I know that structural transitions can be also second order, but when we plot the lattice parameters, there is a quite distinct jump which suggests that the structural transition is first order. That is why we conclude that they are not coupled, that's not a magnetostructural transition, that we think that first the structural transition is happening and at a slightly lower temperature the magnetic transition. 